Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. Well, the Europeans are playing with the XLDF700 Domino, which I've always called the Domazilla. It's the really big brother to the Domino, and it's used for doing the larger scale joinery. Now, just because the DF700 came out doesn't mean that the DF500 can't be used for larger scale joinery, at least larger than what is normally prescribed with the tenons that you can get with the Domino. I mean, we have these, the largest size tenon that we have with the DF500 is a 10 millimeter 50. So you're going to go in about, a, about an inch into each piece of stock if you're going to balance that, and it'll be just a hair under a half inch thick. Now if you're trying to connect, say, a table apron to a leg, normally you would either, in the case of the DF500, you would stack some dominoes. So you'd pl plow a domino near the top of the leg and a little bit further down, so you get two tenons in there. Now that's easy enough to do, but say you wanted one that was actually a much larger tenon. Now you can plow larger size mortises with a DF500. As you can see here, I've created mortises with the 10 millimeter bit, and this one here is at the exact size, here is at the wider setting, and then at this one here is where I'm using the widest setting when you're just using the domino as is. So that's using, you know, again, the exact, the mid size, and then the extra wide. But if you use some simple techniques that I'll be showing you here, you can create a mortise that's this wide and it's very repeatable. Now you can place this larger mortise accurately with just a single pencil line that's going to be for the center of it. So it makes it very convenient that just using a couple extra techniques with your DF500, you can make repeatable size mortises like this. So the Domino is able to plow a mortise that's up to 27 millimeters deep. So with that, you could actually use a tenon if you were to balance it out to be 54 millimeters long total. So that's a fairly significant size mortise. That's going to be a two inch long tenon. And with this technique here, I was able to create a repeatable size tenon that's almost two and a third inches wide. So it's 58 millimeters wide. So normally you're going to create these tenons out of just grabbing some scrap wood. Now this is a piece that's left over from one of my recent projects. I plan on resawing this so that I can create 10 millimeter and eight millimeter stock. It's not wide enough to create two sheets of 10, but this will be good anyway to have a little bit with some eights. And uh, with this, I'll have so many large tenons, I won't need any more. But of course, you know, even if you have some smaller stock, some more narrow stock, sure, you're not going to be able to fill a two inch wide mortise with this, but it's still much larger and considerably longer you can make it than, say, these tenons here. Now to resaw this stock into some sheets that I'll be able to use to create tenons, what I have here is I have a 10 millimeter domino and an 8 millimeter domino. Uh, this sheet isn't quite wide enough for me to be able to have a kerf and uh, any cleanup and still end up with two 10 millimeter sheets. So I'm just going to go for a 10 and an 8, which is more versatile for me anyway, because then I'll have you know a lot of oversized tenons of each type. Now <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up to cut just a hair wider than 10 millimeters that I'll need so that I can do a little bit of cleanup on a drum sander that we'll be doing next. Uh, there's many other ways that you could do it. If you don't have a drum sander, you could always hit it with a random orbit sander, any flat sheet sander that you're doing, or for that matter, if you plan on using, say, an epoxy, you could even cut this pretty much at 10 millimeters. If there's a little bit of gapping on the inside when you insert the tenon, just use something like an epoxy that has a filler with it. Uh, but that's more when we get to the joinery section. So for me, I'm going to cut it a hair wider than the 10 millimeters, and then we're going to run it onto the drum sander and finish it off. Now one thing that's going to make accurately sizing this on the drum sander a little easier is to have a guide. Now what I would like to use as a guide I mean, certainly I could do something like put the domino up next to it and kind of feel to see if there's a discrepancy, and that's, that's good when you're going kind of coarse. But ultimately, I don't care how thick this thing is. I care how thick that's going to be when it goes into the hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, one of these scrap blocks that I did a bunch of domino mortises on on my previous calibration video, and I'm just going to plow a mortise right here of the 10 millimeter, and then we're going to cut it in half, and we're going to use it as a cutting guide. I'll show you that in just a moment here. I'm going to set this to be actually a fairly deep cut so that we have uh, a good amount a good amount of guide. Now you're going to want to use a hardwood with that. You're not going to want to use a scrap of ply or something like that, something that's going to delimate and have kind of fuzzy corners after you've bumped it a few times. So I'm using a scrap of hard maple here. So now that I've cut the block, you can see that basically I've just exposed the corner on this domino so that I can slide the material through that I just finished resawing and I could use it as kind of a thicknessing guide to see where I need to do additional work. 
Now, before I got back on camera, I got a little, I tried it out really quickly, and it turns out that I'm not going to have to do anything with the drum sander anyway. I had this thing pretty much set. So, you know, it's a snug fit. If you were pushing this into a full-size mortise, you might have to push a little bit harder than you might care for. But to me, this is to the point where I can just take something like the RS-2E, not the drum sander, and get that whole thing set up. It's much faster for me to slap the RS-2E on here and go one pass up with the 80 grit, and it'll probably let this become light enough. Now, with it being, uh, this wood wasn't completely planed beforehand. This was actually just some rough stock that was left over, so there are a few areas that are a bit lower. What I like to do when I've done this in the past is I, I usually throw this in with the tenon stock so that I can check it ahead of time. So if I'm needing tenon, say, for apron to leg joint or, or something larger than I'm building, and this is what I'm going to cut my loose tenons out of, I can at least use this to just slide it around and go, all right, basically this whole chunk here is just fine. I can cut all the tenons I want out of that. There's a little part here that's a little bit loose. Maybe I'll skip over that and go down until it gets snug again. So from here on down, it's fine. But for the most part, that was all the work it took, was just resawing this one board. Now, I'm going to bring you in closer, and I'm going to show you how to make those mortises. Now, of course, if you want to make an oversized mortise with a domino, you can simply plow the mortise, scoot it over, and plow it again. Now, that's going to make a, a mortise that's larger than what you were going to make with whatever setting you have on the domino. But of course, is that a repeatable size? Is that something that you could pre-cut some tenons for so that you would have tenon stock, say if you're doing an apron to leg joint, well you'd need eight of those. So are you going to want to sit there and rip each one of those individually? Probably not. So there's a couple things that you can do to make the tenons all the same size or the mortises all the same size in doing your work and it's handy to know a couple formulas. Now normally a lot of people subscribe to my videos just on YouTube I do usually post additional information on my blog, so this is one of those cases where, you know, if you're a YouTube-only subscriber, uh, go head over to my blog and look at the blog entry for this because I'll have a number of formulas for you. They're very simple lookup tables and such so that you can pick a bit, a width on the domino and know what size it's going to come out. Now, the way that you can get a calculated size tenon or mortise is like what I did here on this simple, you know, scrap board, obviously scrap. Uh, is I just plowed some 5 millimeter and then some 10 millimeter dominoes and these are using the widths that are available on the DF500 so you know the exact size the one that adds three extra millimeters on either side and then the one that adds an additional five to either side so with these knowing those numbers you can even come up with some decent uh, estimate for the size of one of these mortises but how do you do it when you want to try enlarging it so like when I enlarge this one here how would I know ahead of time what the size is obviously one way is to just pick a technique plow it in some scrap wood figure out what the size is and then go and do that on your table but what I'd like to do is show you how how I do it so that maybe that could be the technique that you use for making it a little bit easier to you know not have to kind of reinvent the wheel every time you go to do an oversized tenon like this. Now, the fundamental part of this technique is to use the cursor that's on the fence. Now, the cursor here has, you know, the center line that I showed you on a previous video how to adjust, but then there are also other millimeter lines that come off of the center. Now, the first set of lines on either side is at the 10 millimeter mark, so 10 millimeters to the left or to the right, and then after that they go in steps of one millimeter. Now that's actually a key to how you can create an oversized mortise like what I did in this case here. That's exactly how I created this oversized mortise was actually by using a 13 millimeter offset. And I'll go over all that and you'll see some of those tables on my site. Now one of the keys for laying out mortises side by side and getting an elongated one like this is laying them out close enough that you eliminate the round in the middle. So there has to be enough of an overlap for this mortise here to overlap, say, this one here to get rid of the round portion that you would otherwise have to flatten out. Now that's for creating the widest mortise possible with a particular setting that you're using. Now this one here happens to be at the limit. This one here was using a 10 millimeter bit and I was using it on the widest setting. So what that's going to do is if you, if you were to look at the tables that I'll give you on, on the website, if you're on the widest setting, what you're going to get is a mortise that's the width of the bit plus 23 millimeters. Okay? So if we were to take a look at uh, this one over here, this one here I plowed it with the 5 millimeter bit. It's going to be 28 millimeters. It's the 23 plus the 5. 
Now the way that you're going to create an oversized mortise is you're going to take advantage of these other millimeter marks on either side of that center marking. Now I'm just going to use this block with some blue tape to make it more obvious for you on the video, but pretend that this line here is actually the center line that you want for your mortise. Normally you would line that up with the center cursor. But what I'm suggesting that you're going to do is if you wanted to create this larger size mortise that I created here, what I did there is I lined it up on the 13 millimeter offset. So the 13 millimeter offset is right there. So I did, I lined it up so that the center line of the mortise I want is at the 13 millimeter offset there, and then I scooted it over to this 13 millimeter offset here, and then I plowed it again. And that created this oversized mortise, which with the formulas that I have on my site, you'll know, is going to be 58 millimeters wide. Now you don't have to, of course, use a 13 millimeter line. You could use a 10 millimeter line. That's the smallest line that you have registered on the cursors. But if you were to use the 10, then of course you'd be taking six millimeters off there. You'd be making a 52 millimeter wide mortise. So that could be using the lines here and then right there. Now you can go wider, of course, with these lines, but then the problem becomes that you're not going to be getting a full clean mortise all in those two passes. You would end up having, you know, basically you would have something like this in between the mortises. So you'd have to then just go back in the middle and just plow that out. Now there's no real measurement for that. You can just scoot over and take care of it. It's a very easy cleanup pass. So you could use these formulas to extend out even further beyond for creating a larger size mortise. And then you just have to create the tenons that go along with it. Now to demonstrate how this works, I wanna try just taking some scrap here and I'm gonna pretend this is a leg and this is gonna be an apron that we're gonna go ahead and join this up top. Um, don't make aprons out of wafer board. So what I've created here, this is a cutoff from the tenon stock that I had made earlier. Now it did turn out that it was just a hair too fat, so I gave it a couple swipes with some 80 grit and that was about all it took for getting this dimension. Now the tenon size that I chose is just kind of arbitrary. That's gonna be it right there. But I did pick a size that's on the formula table that I, I have on the site. And this one here is set to being 55 millimeters wide. And because of the plunge depth on the domino is 27 on either side, I've set the other dimension to be 54 millimeters long. So this should be one of the larger size mortises that you can plow using uh, two plunges of the domino. And this is a 10 millimeter thick sheet, which is, you know, it's decidedly thicker than you would normally use on this size stock, this 18 millimeter stock, but I haven't created any six millimeter stock yet. So I'll just use this for the demonstration. So now, since this is very close to being square, I'm gonna go ahead and draw on the board itself just to show its grain line, since this is the way that we're going to be doing the joinery. It's not going to be going this way here and then I'd be wondering why it doesn't fit and getting very creative with my language. Now according to the formulas, if I use the 10 millimeter bit like I have currently in here, if I were to space out setting the center line to the 10 millimeter marks here, then what I'm going to end up with is a 53 millimeter wide mortise. Now I already sized this to 55. So in order to do that, I'd have to go to the 11 millimeter marks, right? Because you're going to add one extra millimeter onto each side, adding two total. So from 53, we're going to bump up to 55. And that's the size that we've got here. Now I'm going to need a center line for doing my mortise. So if I were to line this up here and just eyeball it, we've got a center line right around there. I'd mark it with a pencil, but you're not going to be able to see. So I'm going to go ahead and use that little blue tape trick that I used earlier in order to give you a really obvious line. There we go, that's gonna be our line for doing the mortising. So I'll be able to show you on the camera where I've got things lined up. Now per our calculation, we're gonna be doing it at the 11 millimeter mark off the center. So if I were to place this block on here, I'm gonna place this center line for the mortise on the 11 millimeter mark. So for the first one, that's gonna be located here. And then I'm gonna shift it over to this 11 millimeter mark, 11 millimeters off the center on the other direction, and I'll plow it again. And we're gonna take a look at the hole.
and there's our second mortise. Now you can see I didn't really size this correctly. I have the height set for a thickness of 16, and this is actually 18, so uh, that was my, uh, my fault there. But now we can see if this is going to fit. Oh, it's not going to fit. This is squared edges. These are rounded. A couple different ways, of course, we could handle that. One, we could use something like these sort of cabinet makers rounding tools. So a little bit of work. You now you got some rounded, this is quarter inch. Uh, we'll see how this thing works. Looks like it's gonna be a good fit. Push that down. Get the other side here, whoops. <coughs> Okay, so one of the problems when you're using a piece of tape to do this, something like this on the video camera is that uh, I was using this as the center when it should have been this side as the center. So my bad, it's not going to be flush on the top, but you can see how this can go together very nicely if those lines were lined up. We'll just go lock this off and make the table a little bit shorter is all. It's very easy to use these larger size dominoes. Much more difficult to yank them out. Hopefully you can add that to your arsenal. So take a look at the chart that's on the website and you're gonna find uh, a number of measurements. It'll tell you if you can do it with just two plunges or if you need to clean up in between and then the width that you're gonna need for your dominoes.